fantastic. My name is Eric. I feel like I'm doing morning prayer on Monday through Friday. My name is Eric Miller, and I'm from Wyoming, Ohio. Wrong service. Um, so you notice that we don't have Sarah Cahall sitting behind the organ bench today. She, like many of us, those who may be still at home, is snowed in. So uh, we do not have music this morning. I know that is very atypical for the 10 o'clock liturgy. Um, she sends her regrets and her apologies. She will be back in next week, but she lives down a country road and it has not been touched yet. So this service will kind of feel like 8 o'clock. Uh, I'll have a few moments of maybe extended silence, but um, the other thing you'll notice about today is last week I overdid it. Uh, with my feet between an 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock in the annual meeting, I tried to stand for portions of the service where we normally stand together, and I got home and my compression sock did not like being on my foot because it was so swollen. There's the sound, thank you. Um, so, um, anyway, I'm going to be seated for most of the service aside from preaching as well as aside from celebrating Eucharist. When you receive Eucharist today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand at the railing so that you don't feel like I'm going to run into you, okay? So when we have Holy Eucharist, I'll be kneeling on my scooter thing, uh, but up against the railing, and we'll, we'll do it that way. All right, so let's have just a moment to be still together. Imagine music in your mind if you would like, and then we'll begin. Right, I invite those of you who are able and would like to stand to please stand for the beginning of our service. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's use the text of the Gloria to pray, pray it together. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our lessons from Holy Scripture. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. Two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. 
Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go and say to these people, Keep listening, but do not comprehend. Keep looking, but do not understand. Make the mind of this people dull, and stop their ears, and shut their eyes, so that they may not look with their eyes, and listen with their ears, and comprehend with their minds, and turn and be healed. Then I said, How long, O Lord? And he said, Until cities lie waste without inhabitant, and houses without people, and the land is utterly desolate, until the Lord sends everyone far away, and vast is the emptiness in the midst of the land. Even if a tenth part remain in it, it will be burned again, like a terebinth or an oak whose stump remains standing when it is felled. The holy seed is its stump. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is 138. Let's read it responsibly by whole verse. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the kings of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he cares for the lowly. He perceives the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. The Lord God will make good his purpose for me. O Lord, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you now as you're able to stand for the gospel proclamation. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, 
Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet, if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats, so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It feels so strange not to be doing my usual customs and habits and practices in this space. It feels so weird. All right. So, last Sunday, Jesus was in his hometown of Nazareth, offending the old hometown folks, if you will. Remember with me that they drove Jesus out of their town with the intent to hurl him off a cliff. But Jesus ghosted them. He passed through the midst of them, going on his way. Today, we come to Jesus on the shore of Lake Gennesaret, more commonly known as the Sea of Galilee. All along the way in Luke's gospel, Jesus has been encountering people, often great crowds of people, even encountering some unclean spirits he deals with. He goes into the home of Simon, where Jesus heals Simon's mother-in-law of her fever. And in Luke's gospel, Simon wasn't even yet a disciple of Jesus's. Jesus continued preaching in the Judean synagogues. I, I loved the fact that every step of the way with this, I admire Jesus' authenticity to his mission, his tenacity, his willingness to teach and to heal and to preach wherever he was. And finally, this morning, Jesus is on the shores of Lake Gennesaret, preaching to the crowds, to Simon and his partner James and John, to the great crowds as well as to us. What does Jesus come upon at that shoreline but another opportunity to teach, to be with people again, with the experience of said people pressing in upon him. And that, it, just reading that and saying it out loud, people pressing in upon Jesus, oof, that makes me uncomfortable. Even before the pandemic, I, you know, the way that we're spaced out now, I think just because we have our pews and, and we have social distancing, before the pandemic, I didn't want anyone pressing in upon me. No, I certainly don't now as well. But you know, pre-pandemic, I needed my space. I preferred the less expensive lawn seats at River Bend for the Jimmy Buffett concerts we enjoyed, with space to spread out rather than crowds of humanity all pressing into me closer to the stage. I, give me the back rows with that stuff. Well, Jesus must have needed a bit of space that day, too. He sees two boats. The fishermen weren't even on their boats anymore. They were out on the beach washing their nets from a night's worth of unsuccessful fishing on the water. He gets into Simon's boat, and, and Jesus asks Simon to put out a bit from the shore so he could teach the crowd from the boat. And at this moment, I can hear Jesus practically sighing, ah, as he's out in that boat, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 yards maybe from the shore, and from all those people pressing in on him, I know that's what I would be doing as Simon moved that boat out a bit the crowd. Jesus taught the crowds for a bit, but then he turns away from the crowds, and he turns, I believe, to an already exhausted Simon. Remember with me that Simon had been fishing all night. He'd been fishing all night and was preparing his gear to be stored away for the next night, and Jesus, the carpenter's son, that Jesus, has the audacity to, Simon, to say to Simon, the fisherman, Put out into the deep water and let your nets down for a catch. What in the world? Simon was done fishing for the day. He was cleaning his fishing nets 
when Jesus got into the boat. The kind of nets that Simon used were most likely made for use during the night when the fish wouldn't be able to see the net around them and they would be more easily caught in the cover of darkness. And now, Jesus the carpenter's son wants Simon to use those nets again in broad daylight after a night of unsuccessful fishing. And Simon was chomping at the bit for a nap. I know I would be. Simon couldn't have been too happy about this. In fact, uh, just recounting it, I'm kind of angry for Simon, except that we know the ending to the story. Couldn't have been too happy, but yet he did it anyway. Master, we've worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. But this time, those half-cleaned nets that were meant to be put away and used again that next night were pulled back out and used to catch so many fish that those nets started to break. Simon's boat had to signal his partner's boat to come and to give them help. These two boat crews hauled in so many fish that both of their boats were now beginning to sink. That's pretty crazy. Jesus provided those fisher folk with one amazing, miraculous catch of fish. But the story of Simon and the story of the nets and all isn't about the fish. The story isn't about the boat or the crowds of people on the shoreline, nor about Jesus needing a bit of space away from the crowd. This story today is about the overflowing abundance of God's love. Simon might well have not appreciated Jesus instructing Simon to go back out into the deep again, we can be certain he was elated to have listened to Jesus after that miraculous catch. Simon would have been tired on that shoreline. Can any of us relate today to being physically tired? Simon would have been emotionally and spiritually tired as well. He wasn't out there fishing for the sport of it. Simon was fishing for a survival. And he'd been skunked the night before. Skunked is a word fisher folk use when they don't catch a thing. If I've been fishing all day and I didn't even get a strike or a bite, um, I, would, I would come home and say I got skunked. Simon had been skunked. Simon may well have been at his breaking point. I'm not talking about the fishing nets breaking. It wasn't cheap to fish on the Sea of Galilee. There were hefty fees and there were taxes imposed on them. You didn't get a denarii with empty nets back at the shoreline. Can we relate to that? That, that frazzled feeling, that exhaustion feeling, that feeling of what am I going to do next? That feeling of just like being physically and spiritually uncertain of ourselves? Well, I'll share a brief tale, as you knew I would. I spent Friday night and part of Saturday trying to figure out how I was going to get myself over to this church building today to be able to lead worship with you all. We know that life in the world is especially weird and peculiar today. We know there are jobs available, that's what we hear, and we also know that employers are short-staffed, and that goes all along the spectrum, with churches, with big businesses, with small businesses. Um, we, we did really well. We got our, our church sidewalk area cleared. Our, our snow removal company does a great job. They were able to get that clear for worship today. Um, but with, uh, with their shortage, they were not able to get the rectory stuff done. And I'm usually extremely understanding all that. Normally it wouldn't be a big deal. I'd um, put my boots on and go out and, and shovel some and, and make a path to, to get wherever I needed to get. Uh, but with the boot... It's impossible. Like, if I slip and fall with the boot and mess up my foot more, you all don't want to hear me talking about this anymore, so this has got to heal. All right? So it was, it was an impossibility for me to be able to deal with the snow. It was an impossibility for me with the grounds looking. You don't realize it when you look at that rectory, but um, under, under normal circumstances, like when you take that sidewalk up to the front of the rectory, that's a big hill. If you're on one of these and you're pushing with your foot, or worse yet, if you're sliding down it looking to see for ice, which there wasn't any, thanks, thanks to Don and, and Melissa. But anyway, I, I could see the church building from my porch, but I knew with the current conditions there wasn't any way I was getting over here without the walks having something done. Thanks to Don and Melissa, to Kim and to Barbara and to Lucas and Nathaniel for their snow removal, their ice picking, and their salting. I was able to get to the church building today and be with us for worship. I couldn't have been here otherwise. My sincerest thanks to all of you. 
I would have had my own boys, actually, they're probably glad of this, I would have had them do all the work, except that I didn't think they'd get very far with the ice and a plastic snow shovel from Walmart. So, be thankful, boys, that there was ice. And that's just my little episode of trying to get here on Sunday morning. That's, that's just my, my own thing that threw my Saturday off. There are folks with COVID. There are folks who are dying from COVID or who have died from COVID. There are people who do not have work. There are people who have injuries like this who don't have a supportive community to say, sure, I'll come and help get you, dig you out. There are people who don't have spouses who are able to drive them around and get them to the accessible side of the building. Uh, there are people with really deep, real issues and problems um, to where they are spiritually and physically exhausted. There are folks for whom um, that you have family issues we will never know about. There are people sitting in here right now who have family issues we will never know anything about that are deep-seated and are a big thing for them right now in their lives, and they're, they're carrying that on their own. I don't, know that for, I don't know that for a fact. I'm just guessing with the odds, like, it's just the way the world is. If we're honest, we will know exhaustion. Simon, though, was willing to listen to Jesus, to accept Jesus' command, and then to follow Jesus. This morning's story is a story about God's abundant love, love that is so overflowing that it took two whole fishing vessels to bring that catch to shore, and they nearly drowned trying to do so. For Simon to experience this catch, he was willing to listen. He accepted Jesus' words, and then he went out and he followed Jesus after. We have the exact same opportunities today. And our challenge is, are we willing to listen to God? Are we willing to accept Christ's direction in our lives, to look and to listen, to ask, and then to accept it? Are we then willing to follow wherever the Spirit leads? We aren't guaranteed an easy ride of it, even when we do. I mean, I know it was still hard to get around into the church building and slide down and get over here, all, all the different things. But it was possible due to the hard work of those folks. Living in a pandemic is all sorts of grief and hardships, but, but yet throughout it, we have been present to one another. We have access to vaccines and face masks and many other common and really easy practices to abide by. Yeah. When we are emotionally and when we are spiritually struggling in life, we can choose to look to others to be with us. I had a perfect example yesterday. Um, I didn't even share this example with my spouse yet. I was up in bed frustrated and... Um, just upstairs laying there, and my good friend Sherilyn texted me and said, why don't we go get coffee and I'll drive you around. And you know what this priest did, don't you? I said, no, I'm going to take a nap, which didn't help matters any. Um, but we can, we can open ourselves to that. We can, we can be real with one another, and we can share our suffering and our hurt. I, I can't fix your hurt. You can't fix one another's hurt, but we can be present to each other in it. We need to listen, to accept, and to follow Jesus' guidance. When we do, I believe that all sorts of remarkable things can happen. We'll sense a truer, a fuller connection with God. Instead of nets near breaking with fish, our hearts then overflow with abundance of deep love and gratitude. To get to experience deep love and gratitude, we must acknowledge that we cannot. Simon fished all night, remember he got skunked. But God can. Put out into the deep, let down your nets one more time with me in the boat with you. Listen, accept, and follow Jesus' guidance. We'll be glad we did. Amen. Now I invite us to stand as we're able to reaffirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. 
For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the beginning, you created humanity and declared us very good. We were made in Africa, came out of Egypt. Our beginnings, all of our beginnings, are rooted in dark skin. We are all siblings. We are all related. We are all your children. We are all siblings. We are all related. We are all your children. Violence entered creation through Cain and Abel. Born of jealousy, rooted in fear of scarcity, brother turned against brother. The soil soaked with blood, Cain asked, am I my brother's keeper? We are all siblings. We are all related. We are our brother's keeper. When your people cried out in slavery, you heard them. You did not ignore their suffering. You raised up leaders who would speak truth to power and lead your people into freedom. Let us hear your voice. Grant us the courage to answer your call. Guide us towards justice and freedom of all people. We are all siblings. We are all related. We all deserve to be free. Through the prophets you told us to worship you want for us, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke. Yet we continue to serve our own interest, to oppress our workers, to crush our siblings by the neck because we're afraid, because they don't look like us, act like us, talk like us. Yet they are us, and we are them. We are all siblings. We are all related. We are not free unless all are free. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, born in poverty, living under the rule of a foreign empire, brown-skinned, dark-haired, Middle Eastern. They called him Yeshua, your Son, who welcomed the unwelcome, accepted the unacceptable, the foreigners, the radicals, the illiterate, the poor, the agents of empire, and the ones who sought to overthrow it, the men and women who were deemed unclean because of their maladies. We are all siblings. We are all related. We are all disciples. The faith of Christ spread from region to region, culture to culture. You delight in the many voices, many languages raised to you. You teach us that in Christ there is no Jew or Greek, there is no slave or free, there is no male or female. In Christ we are all one, not in spite of our differences, but in them. Black, brown, white, female, non-binary, male, citizen and immigrant, in Christ we are all one. We are all siblings, we are all related, we are all one in Christ. Each week we confess our sin to you and to one another. We know that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We are captive to the sin of white supremacy, which values some lives more than others, which believes some skin tones are more perfect than others, which commits violence against those who are different. We confess our complicity in this sin. We humbly repent. We ask for the strength to face our sin, to dismantle it, and to be made anew. We trust in your compassion and rely on your mercy, praying that you will give us your wisdom and guide us in your way of peace, that you will renew us as you renew all of creation in accordance to your will. Let us now pray for our own needs and those of others, for Nola, Pop, Kara, Carolyn, Jackie, Sue. Hear our prayer. And at this time, I invite you to offer your prayers, either aloud or in the silence of your hearts. May Lord God, for our children in school, pray for our country. Thanks for our invite to welcome Connect Ministry for our vestry. Let us pray our vision that we may become a vital and growing faith community 
with overflowing worship services and Christian growth opportunities. A church with compassion-centered ministries through which all find a place and take God's love into the world. Amen. We ask this, we pray this as your children, all siblings, all related, all beloved children of God. Amen. Now, after a moment of silence to ponder what we're sinful of, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Your food was delicious, thank you. God's peace be with you. Congregation can be seated if you would like. And do we have any birthdays or anniversaries we'd like to recognize with the birthday blessing, an anniversary blessing? All right. Let's see. We have plenty of announcements. I won't go through them all, but I do want to highlight a few. I'll get to the 8 o'clock bulletin where I literally have them highlighted. All right. The, um, the adult formation... We took this Sunday off from the 9 o'clock time. Um, Colleen did a fantastic job. It cracks me up because the Gospel of Mark is the shortest gospel. Um, and what, what did we take? A year and a half to go over the Gospel of Mark? I think it's great. We did a really deep dive with that, with Colleen Matthews leading the way. Um, and we are through with the Gospel of Mark, at least studying it in that format. It will always be in our hearts. Uh, we're taking today off. And next Sunday, Philip Brandewey is teaching on what is the Bible the canons of the Bible, and not the canons that go boom. Um, that will be next Sunday at 9 o'clock in the library, as well as on Zoom. So I encourage folks to come back out for that. Um, it will, do we know how many, how long is the series going to be, Philip? Do you know? Um, I'm not sure. I'm probably in, what is that, two months? Yeah. Two months two month or so series. So we're at, that'll be a pretty good deep dive into the canons as well. So about, about eight weeks or so. Um, other things that are happening, I want to make sure that we catch and capture um, things that happen. So this section here, the Altar Guild Ministry, um, folks don't want anything in particular done for them. I get that. But I want people to know that Betsy Cooper, Karen Fetterman, and Debbie Rumke have faithfully served as Altar Guild people, I don't know, at least 12 years, probably 20 or 30 years. Um, and, and they've recently stepped down from that ministry, um, and I just want to thank them for that. I also want to uh, f- fully welcome on board Randy Levesque, as well as Rosemary Miller, um, I, I heard rumor there was one more new Ultra Guild member. Um, that might be wishful thinking from the person who said it to me, but um, if I miss someone, please let me know. So welcome them and, and give thanks for those who went before and served. The other thing is that if you have ever received a card, a, a, nice, a nice card that has something on it, a picture or something, and a nice little handwritten note, if it hasn't said, in God's grace, Eric L. Miller, but instead says, um, your friend's A and H T, that's come from Betsy Cooper. And that lady has faithfully sent out... A, tons of cards over at least a 12-year period. Um, Betsy is is, um, lovingly releasing that ministry. She's done it a long time. Um, So I encourage you to give Betsy thanks for that because I know that my family has received a lot and and anytime she knows of anything happening in the life of the faith community, she sends a card out for it. So, but with that as well, it's a good ministry and it doesn't need to stop because Betsy has has released that ministry. It can continue, um, but it needs to continue with us doing it. So if you'd like to do that, it doesn't need to be one person. We can have a few people do it. Let me know. You can email me or you can call me and let me know. We can talk with Betsy and see her system for doing it. That would be helpful, but it's a really important ministry. I hope we can continue, but um, my sincere thanks to Betsy for that. I spoke with Jean Pano. She's going to speak next week 
about the parish health ministry for the month. That's our, our year-round stewardship look. She'll be speaking about that in particular next week during the service. a and Tidings is a brand new thing. It's going to be news from and about members of the a and church family. Um, so Ernasia has in here several of the examples of... Um, Eric is making a steady recovery from, from expected surgery on his foot at uh, Mercy Fairfield. Many thanks for all your prayers, cards, flowers, and clearing off the sidewalk. Um, that kind of thing would be appropriate. One thing that we need to be careful of, so this is part of an Invite, Welcome, Connect initiative. It's a good way for us to stay connected and to get to know what's happening in the lives of, of parishioners. One thing to be careful about, though, is before you post that about, before you send that to Renasia, um, Eric's doing better from surgery. He thanks you for the prayers. Call me and say, Eric, I want to, is it okay, for, is it okay with you if we put that out in the, what are we calling it? A and H T Titans for the rest of the faith community to know, because I don't want for anyone to have their feelings hurt because we shared something about Matt, and then Matt says, well, I didn't want that shared, that was personal, all right? So um, if we, I know that it's been okay to share about Bob and Wendy Allen, they just moved and they want the community to know that will go in there, that's great. Um, but we would need to check with them first and say, is that okay if we let the church know about that? So, um, but I think it's a great way, a great thing that we're doing to make sure that we stay connected as a faith community. Um, you all are very busy with outreach. We did St. Paul Village Ministry recently uh, in Madisonville, and we got a nice thank you note. Dear parishioners of ANHT, thank you for your generous donation to St. Paul Village. Your generosity makes a difference. It will provide monthly lunches to our residents who choose to attend. May our Lord bless you for your kindness. Thank you also for your volunteers who joyfully serve our residents. They are key to making the monthly luncheons a success. We are truly grateful. Um, those who want to join this great ministry, uh, please contact Kathy Kessler or Noel Horn. And last but not, actually no, two great announcements. Um, we are on chapter two tomorrow night for the Braving the Wilderness Brene Brown book study. You never know with the pandemic what's going to happen. We had close to 20 people on the Zoom call. 20 people. And then Bridget got to have a nice study in the library with my wife. So, in person, you know, and, and who knows, tomorrow night it may be flip-flop and there's 20 people in the library and it's me with one person in the Zoom room. I don't know. But um, I think it's great that we do these hybrid opportunities. It was a really good discussion at Chapter 1 last week. Um, it, it helps if you read the chapter, but it's not necessary. It's a great group of people who enjoy talking and listening with one another, and um, I can't wait to be there tomorrow night. Uh, and then last but not least, uh, the music ministry is subject to change due to COVID guidelines. We have, um, Sarah Cahal has put um, something into practice with metrics, and we're going to be able to have the choir back next week. That's huge. Um, yeah, from, from no music to having the choir back again. But, um, so that is all um, done with folks in her music field and her colleagues. Um, and I'm excited that we get to have not only music again next week, but the choir singing as well. So I think that's just fantastic. Uh, last but not least, a reminder to you all that I'm not going to be in the center here to celebrate or to give communion. I'll be on the, the railing there so you don't feel like I'm going to move into you uh, with the wheelie cart. It'll be braced up against the altar rail. The other thing is uh, if someone, if an usher can help slide this chair over a bit, I don't want for anyone to get caught coming up this and then like trip on my chair. That would be good. And then at the end of the service, I won't be doing a receiving line in the back. Uh, I'm trying to sit more today so I don't, my foot doesn't thump as much later this afternoon from standing too much. If people want to come up and say hi, like sometimes we do at the end when I'm in the back there, I'm just going to stay up here. After I do the dismissal, I'll sit here, and if folks want to come say hello and nice sermon or what'd you do that for or <laughs> any of that kind of thing, you're, you're, welcome, you're welcome to do that. I'll, I'll sit here, and um, I'll sit here for a few minutes, and then I'll go back, uh, back to my office and my ice pack. All right, but I'm delighted to be with you. Uh, we are hoping that we can start our coffee hours again relatively soon. We're still working and thinking about that, but um, I'm delighted to get to worship with each one of you. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, and come into God's courts with praise and with thanksgiving.
Let us now stand together as we are able for the great thanksgiving of our lives. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels. All that we give heaven, wherever we see this hidden, proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of God. Your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. We offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine, we pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with Mary and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And give us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 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 body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us pray together. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May God, who in Christ gives us a spring of water welling up to eternal life, perfect in you the image of God's glory. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. You just did an 8 o'clock service at 10 o'clock.